The objective of this video is to introduce winding factor calculations for AC machines. This video is going to take an approach based on the voltage phasors of the coil sides in each slot of the machine. So we're going to build off of the star of slots video. And the winding factor is a rather fundamental property of our electric machines winding. It impacts both the voltage that we see at the terminals of our motor as well as the current linkage that we create in the air gap of the motor. This video is concerned with the voltage that we see at the terminals of our motor. A later video will consider the winding factor's impact on the current linkage. Early on in the course, we had remarked that the winding factor relates the amount of flux linking a coil or linking a winding when not the same amount of flux links each coil. And that remains absolutely true. That is a fundamental truth about the winding factor. However, we're going to talk about this in terms of the voltage phasors that we see in our coil sides. And I've written on here that the definition of a winding factor is the geometric or vector sum of all the coil side phasors in a phase winding divided by the algebraic sum of all the coil side phasors in a phase winding. So what does that mean? Well, hypothetically, suppose that this is a phase winding and it consists of all these coil sides. And so the overall phasor for our phase winding looks like this, and it was the vector sum of all those blue phasors. So maybe we denote this. So I'm just drawing an arbitrary set of vectors which sum up to give us the total ve phase vector or phasor for our phase U winding. And you can see that I'm keeping the harmonic index V. So this is at some harmonic index that we have these set of coils connected together to give us the total phasor for our phase U winding. The winding factor is then this expression. It's the phasor sum of each of our coil sides phasors divided by our number of coil sides times the phasor of a, of a coil side at slot alpha equals zero. So let's let's write this in a couple different ways. So we had already noted that it's the vector sum of our coil side phasors divided by the algebraic sum, which we can express like this. And you can see that I'm summing this over index i from 1 to 2n, where I assume that n is the number of coils in a phase, and so it's to 2n because we have two coil sides per coil. And so this is the definition of our winding factor. And so we can point out from this expression that our phase voltage phasor, so whether this is phase U or phase V or phase W, is going to be equal to the summation of the phasors of all the coil sides. And from our definition of winding factor above, we can rewrite this as saying it's going to be equal to 2n times our winding factor times the phasor of the slot zero, or the, the slot at alpha equals zero. And notice that our winding factor is a complex quantity. This is actually different than how your textbook sets it up. Your textbook just talks about the magnitude of the winding factor. But in fact, I am showing you that your winding factor is a complex quantity. It has a magnitude and a phase. So all of your calculations for winding factor based on what I'm teaching you here will match the magnitude in your textbook. But now you've got this additional phase that you'll be using, and that will help indicate a few other physical quantities, and it'll help with the relation between current linkage and winding factor in a subsequent video. So let's talk about how we calculate winding factor. The first approach is that you can take a graphical approach. You can simply repeat this diagram that we drew up here for every single value of v that you wish to calculate your winding factor for. This is a nice in physically intuitive approach to, to what your winding factor means. And of course, you can al always use a mathematical approach. And we're going to develop this mathematical approach in the remainder of this video. And to do this, I need you to recall our previous video that talked about the voltage phasors in each slot of our winding. And so we had these two expressions. The first expression gives us the 
voltage or the in terms of a, a, a voltage phasor in each side of our winding. And the second expression gives us the voltage phasor in this so-called slot zero or the location at alpha equals zero. And that depended on the phasor of our magnetic field and our air gap, our magnetizing field. And so we can write an expression for the phasor of a total coil by subtracting two coil sides from each other. So suppose that we have a coil that looks like this. Our coil is composed of two coil sides, one here at angle alpha one, and a second over here at angle alpha two. And so the total phasor for this coil is going to be the phasor of coil one minus the phasor of coil two. And we can write this out. until we get this expression here. I think it's fairly easy to see how the problem was set up right here. We talked before about how when you have a coil in at a certain slot location, alpha one or alpha two, you just rotate this phasor by the negative of that angle. And, and then if you sit down and do the math, you can convert this expression here to this long expression here where this term right here is what we call the pitch factor of our winding. And it's called the pitch factor because it's directly re related to the pitch of the coil. It's directly related to how broad, how much space this coil spans, how the value of gamma. If gamma equals zero, clearly the coil has no pitch and it doesn't link any flux. And for the case for our, our fundamental harmonic, when V equals one, we define a full pitch coil as being gamma equals pi by p. So if gamma equals pi by p, that sine term is going to be one. So the magnitude of our pitch factor is one, and that is called a full pitch coil. And we can draw what that looks like. Suppose we have a rotor with two poles. A full pitch coil will have a span of 180 degrees, or pi. P equals one, gamma equals pi. Contrary to this, if gamma is less than pi by P, we call it a short pitch coil. So this first case is for gamma equal pi by P. And the second case is for gamma less than pi by P. Now you can see that not all of the pole flux will link the coil. In the full pitch coil case, all of the, the flux of the pole can link our coil but now when we've short pitched our coil, it's called, and we've decreased the pitch of our coil, not all the flux can possibly link the coil at any given time. And so before going any further, you can immediately see that the coil pitch is going to affect our winding factor. It's going to affect the magnitude of our back EMF. So if this sine term decreases, then clearly the magnitude of our coil's voltage is also going to decrease. The reason that we do this is that if we carefully pick our value of gamma, we can actually eliminate certain harmonics. So certain values of V will have sine equal to zero. Well, our fundamental component, V equals one, might be close enough to one that we are still happy. Okay, so that was what the pitch factor means and how it relates to whether the, the coil is a full pitch or a short pitch. Let's continue now to talk about how this fits into our, our broader winding factor. Let's continue our winding factor calculation. The phasor for our total phase winding is going to be the sum of the phasors of each coil. And we've expressed the phasors of each coil in terms of a pitch factor here. So we can now express our phase winding phasor in terms of the pitch factors. And then we can go back to what we said about the definition of a winding factor, which is up top. From our definition of the winding factor, we came up with this expression for our winding factor for, our, for the phasor of our, our voltage. That is the phasor of our phase voltage is going to be 2n times our winding factor times this u0 phasor. And we can now divide this side out in order to get an expression for our winding factor in terms of our pitch factor. All right, perfect. We now have an expression for our winding factor in terms of this quantity called a pitch factor. And we wanted to note that this is a complex quantity. It's a, it, has a, it has a magnitude and phase. So we've got this expression, 
And we also have an expression for our pitch factor in terms of the pitch of our coil and the harmonic that we are discussing. And then finally, we can relate the winding factors of our winding to the actual phaser for our winding. So that completely describes the winding factor from the voltage perspective. I want to make another note here now on how winding factor is discussed in the literature and in our textbook. So it's common to talk about a winding factor as being composed of a distribution factor and a pitch factor, which we've already defined, and then a skew factor. And let's unpack this one at a time. So the first is this distribution factor. And the distribution factor is defined fairly similarly to how we defined a winding factor, only instead of using a coil side as its fundamental building block, it uses the entire coil as its building block. So what it's saying is we're going to take the phasor sum of all the coil phasors, that's the numerator here, the phasor sum of all the coil phasors, divided by the algebraic sum of the coil phasors. And we're again referring to a coil that's centered at alpha zero. So that's a distribution factor that would neglect any information about the pitch, that does not care what the pitch of your coil is. It only cares where the location of all your coils are. So it's a step at a higher level than what we were talking about. We went more fundamental in our definition. The next term here is the pitch factor, which is the same factor that we've de developed in this video. That is, that's the same pitch factor we've developed right here. And then the final factor is called a skew factor. And that accounts for flux that does not link your coil due to your stator slots being skewed or due to your rotor slots being skewed. That is, if your stator stack is twisted in a circumferential direction as the stack length extends. For our winding design unit, we're not going to worry about the skew factor, and we're going to focus on considering our winding factors in this form up here. So in summary, this video has introduced the calculation of winding factors for AC machines. We started with a fundamental definition of what the winding factor is, and then we worked up to how we actually can calculate the winding factor either being a mathematical technique or using a graphic technique.